So say you're preparing a romantic dinner for your loved one and you want to mix up something that will get her in the mood. Well, may I suggest a serving of some nice dried roasted deer penis? I'll just let that sink in. Hey there, lab rat sketch here. Aphrodisiacs are substances that increase sexual desire, and ever since the discovery of sticking wiener-shaped objects into donut-shaped objects, humans have been trying to find the one perfect love potion that will make others swoon. Well, mostly guys, actually. Women don't really need aphrodisiacs, they have tits for that. Bear with me as I take you on a journey through history to see just how desperate people can be. All joking aside though, people have been consuming both penises and testicles of animals in hopes of improving their libidos. There is a belief in traditional Chinese medicine that you can improve any part of your body by eating that same part from an animal. And really, their penises and testicles contain a lot of testosterone, the hormone responsible for sex drive in both males and females. But studies show that orally ingested testosterone doesn't really have any effects. It's kinda like believing eating brains will make you smarter. Another substance that was very popular at one point is Spanish fly. Spanish flies are blister beetles. We call them blister beetles because they contain a substance called cantharidin that when put on the skin causes severe chemical burns and blisters. The beetles are grinded into a powder which contains a lot of cantharidin which is then ingested orally. As it passes through the body, cantharidin irritates the genital area causing itchiness and tickling, and increased blood flow to these parts of the body, which causes an erection. However, cantharidin hasn't been used as an aphrodisiac for decades, and there's a good reason for that. Cantharidin is highly poisonous. Just a little bigger dose than usual could kill you, and even if it doesn't, it causes severe damage to your kidneys and urinal tract. Plus, it's not really an aphrodisiac, because you don't really have an erection. Your penis is just swollen from the raging infection that's going on inside it. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little test. But before we can do that, we need to play a drinking game. Take a shot every time I'm probably mispronouncing a substance in the next paragraph. The next supposed aphrodisiac we will be talking about is horny goatweed, or scientifically, epimedium. A goat herder in China noticed that goats that had been eating this herb show increased sexual activity and hoped that the landowner's daughter, of whom he's been having wet dreams about in the field, would feel the same. The active substance in this herb is icarine, which works in the same way as sildenafil, aka Viagra. Icarine works by releasing nitric oxide in the genital area, which causes blood vessels to dilate and increases blood flow to the penis. But icarine is much less potent than sildenafil, and the fact that they give you an erection doesn't make them aphrodisiacs. Giving someone Viagra won't make them horny, and will just make for an awkward dinner table conversation. Okay, now that you're properly liquored up, we can do the test. Are you horny? Does alcohol make you horny? Actually, most men, and especially women, say that it does. Why is that? Is alcohol an aphrodisiac? Well, alcohol reduces inhibition, which causes increased sexual behavior. You know, the reason why you woke up that Sunday with what appears to be a mix between Sasquatch and Susan Boyle lying next to you, and for some reason it has shit on its fingers, and why is your anus bleeding? Anyway, while alcohol does increase sexual behavior, studies have shown that it actually lowers the levels of testosterone, thus causing a decrease in sexual arousal, which then leads to less pleasure and less intense orgasms. To sum it up, it ignites the desire, but kills the performance. So by now, you're probably losing hope. Do aphrodisiacs even exist? Well, if we are to trust the FDA, aphrodisiacs don't exist. But then why the hell would we do that? There is one class of chemicals that is the closest that humans have ever been to a true aphrodisiac. A chemical love potion. They're called alkyl nitrites. But you've probably heard of them being called poppers. Poppers are a class of illicit drugs. Why does it always come to drugs on this channel? Oh, that's why. Seems the next thing we'll be learning is how to cook meth. But I digress. Poppers are liquids of the alkyl nitrite family. They are stored in vials out of which they are sniffed. They're called poppers because of the sound the vials used to make upon opening, back in the 60s. Once inhaled, they cause an immediate relaxation of smooth muscles throughout the body. The smooth muscles include the walls of your blood vessels, so when they are relaxed, blood vessels dilate, causing blood pressure to decrease drastically. This allows a much faster blood flow to the brain, which results in a so-called head rush. When experiencing a head rush, you feel dizzy and lightheaded. You become much more sensitive to touch and other stimulations, and you feel a heat wave pulsing through your body. The smooth muscles also include the vagina and the anus, enabling a much easier slide, if you will, which which is why this drug is very popular in the gay community. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, poppers make your girlfriend take it up her back door. Well, no, that's what jewelry is for. But if you get her to accept, it will sure make the process more pleasant. But the effects of poppers aren't only physical. How poppers affect the brain is not quite understood. Because alkyl nitrites leave the body in the matter of minutes, it's very hard to perform studies. However, users have reported that they feel reduced inhibition and intensified emotions. A high can last from 1 to 5 minutes, after which you are left with a headache. Because of such short-lived effects, you can't form an addiction to them. However, long-term use will cause psychological side effects. Poppers are very dangerous in combination with other drugs that decrease blood pressure, like Viagra, in which case they can cause heart attacks and strokes. So yeah, that's probably as close as a true aphrodisiac as we'll ever get. I personally wouldn't experiment with poppers, not because I think they're harmful per se, but simply because of dependence. You know how when you start drinking in time you realize how you can't have fun with alcohol anymore? Well, that's kinda what would happen. Sex would never be the same without them, and I just don't like the idea of having to rely on a substance to have good sex.
So that's it for this video, hope you guys liked it. There's a lot of purported aphrodisiacs out there, and this is because of the placebo effect, but that doesn't make them much less effective. So leave a comment on what turns you on, it doesn't have to be related to food, I really enjoy reading your comments. Also, please share the video, and if you already haven't, subscribe and join the lab rats.